Maybe you've asked the question before, I'm in need of a new flashlight. I want something small and bright and durable that I can carry with me anywhere. How many flashlights do I need? Nikkor says, just the tip. The tip is Nikkor's big brother to the tube, which I reviewed earlier this year. And both are available at Tech Tool Supply. You're like, bro, my favorite US-based Nikkor dealer. I know. Like the tube, the tip is a small rectangular keychain light that has a built-in battery and is rechargeable via micro USB or USB. The tip is constructed out of anodized aluminum and comes in seven flavors with two LED options. Both LED options are, of course, available in all seven colors. Mine are blue and silver, but you can choose whatever the dark one told you to. The standard tip features a slightly brighter cool white XPG2 emitter, and the tip CRI features a slightly warmer tinted Nichia emitter, which is the one I prefer, but I won't judge you if you like the other kind. Each tip comes in a package with an A ring for your keychain. You'll need to supply your own ordinary micro USB cable and charging brick because you have those unless you, of course, use Apple like I do. Here are the dimensions and weights so you can see if those are important to you and will fit on your keychain properly. Both tips operate identically, have slightly different light outputs on the modes they share, so let's go over them here. My figures and night cores are both on the screen. First is ultra low. Then is mid. Then is high. Then is turbo. Turbo is basically a burst mode as it steps down after 30 seconds. So how does it operate? Easy. It has two switches, one a mode switch and one a power switch. Turn it on by pressing the power button. Hit the mode button to advance in modes from ultra low to mid, then high and back again. The turbo burst mode can be accessed at any time by pressing and holding the mode button while on or off. Ultra low is also available by a shortcut from off too. So just press and hold the power button to get into the low mode. The tip has mode memory in all modes, but turbo. So it turns on in the last mode you used before you turned it off because that's mode memory. You can check the charge level by giving the mode switch a quick press while off. Three flashes means the battery is above 50. Two flashes means it's from 10 to 50%. And one flash means the battery is below 10%. When you plug in the micro USB cord for charging, red means it's charging and green means it's fully charged. When in operation, when you see the red lights flashing under the switches, please recharge your battery because it's asking nicely. Now, if you want to lock it out to prevent accidental activation, hold down both switches until the main LED flashes once to enter lockout mode. The tip will be inoperative to prevent accidental activation. To unlock, hold down both switches again. The lockout helps prevent accidental activation. The tip consumes battery power while in lockout mode. Standby duration in lockout is approximately seven days, while the battery does last longer, like for a year in regular standby mode. Run times. I have tested turbo, high, and mid. I tested both side by side so you can see how the two different emitters affect run time. First is turbo. Both step down within 30 seconds because turbo is basically a burst mode. Around an hour and 19 minutes, the tip CRI with the warmer tinted Nietzsche emitter starts to dim first. The cool white regular tip starts to make that trip a few minutes later. The CRI cuts all the light around the one hour and 45 minutes mark, minutes mark, and the tip at about two hours and 12 minutes. Charging time from a depleted tip after a runtime test took about one hour and 36 minutes. Of course, your time may vary depending on the speed of your charger. Then is high. High is basically the same as turbo mode, other than the initial 30 seconds of burst light. Again, 1 hour 19 minutes-ish for the CRI to dim, Then a few minutes later the XPG2 cool white version starts to dim, CRI shuts off at an hour and 45 minutes, and the cool white about 2 hours and 15 minutes. Then is mid. Both lights run pretty steadily without much noticeable drops in brightness for about 6 hours. The CRI dims first and cuts off at about 6 hours and 32 minutes. The cool white runs at about an hour longer before dimming and then dims right to under the eight hour mark where no light comes out anymore. Okay, beam shots. These are the lights I will be comparing the tip to. All lights are set to their maximum output because that's what the voices told me to do. First, let's do the regular tip. 
It's the brightest light in the whole beam shot section on its burst mode. Now its regular high mode will be still slightly brighter at 173 lumens than the other ones, but we'll just show the turbo mode because we're comparing overall brightnesses no matter how quick they are. Next is the CRI version. As you can see, the tint is considered warmer and not quite as bright. I wouldn't call it super warm, just a touch of warmth. Next is the Astrolux A01, probably the warmest of the three emitters and the only light in this group I haven't reviewed yet. You can check out reviews of all the other ones. I like it a lot, but some people don't like warm tints. And yes, that means something is wrong with those people. Now back to the cool regular tip for a second. Don't worry, we'll compare the warmer one to all the lights too. Now the Phoenix LD15, probably the most defined hotspot of any of the lights. Also a cool white emitter. Now the tip again for a second, which has a larger area of light because the tiny orange peel reflector. Now the BLF 348, the most purest white of all the tints to my eyes. It doesn't seem too cool or too warm. That light only has one mode though. Back to the tip for a second. Boom, boom, boom. And now the Lumintop IYP something, something, something. Cool. Now let's go to the CRI version and compare it to the lights I haven't yet too. Let's go to the Astrolux first. See, the Astrolux is a touch warmer. A little more than a touch. Probably other than the Nikkor, it has the best mode selection. I like the Nikkor interface the most here because of all the shortcuts to the modes I use the most. Now back to the Phoenix. For everyday carry, I prefer a more diffused beam pattern than the Phoenix. Like most of the other lights in this comparison, like the Nikkor tip CRI. Anyway, which I'll have up for a few seconds. Da, 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 da. Now the neutral tinted BLF 348, which again is probably the most objectively neutral tint of all the lights here. But again, I like warm tints. Okay, so that's it. Here, both lights have been compared against all of the others. Wrapping it up. Personally, I prefer the tip to the tube because of the aluminum construction and the emitter choice and the lack of PWM on any of the modes. If you need something more compact and lighter, then the tube is a good option. A lot of people love that light. It's a really good light. I prefer the slightly warmer tints. And the tip CRI one is a nice, slightly warm white tint. I'm glad Nikkor finally started doing this. If you want a slightly higher output, then go with the cool white version, which also has slightly better run times. The light is drop proof to 1.5 meters and waterproof to IP54 standards, which means it's dust proof and splashes of water. If you like this review, buy this light from Tech Tool Supply from the link in the description. Give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel so you can see when I post new reviews. Hey, thanks for watching.